Okay, so I'm here with Armin de Crane Herzeg. We all know him from the amateur scene. We all know he was recently on the Octagon Challenge, which is uh, they were all put into a house together as Team Ireland versus Team England. Uh, I can't wait for that. He's also, his pro debut is coming up as two weeks. Short notice for Armin. It's probably two training camps. He's taking a lot shorter fight. So how are you? Thank you very much for joining me. And, and talk to me about the Octagon Challenge and, and how you found it. Uh, uh, thank you. It's a, it's a pleasure to be back on. You know, haven't been on in a while, but uh, here we are again. Uh, lots have happened. I wasn't really training or anything for the Octagon Challenge. I, I, I knew about it a bit late. Got a call off Paddy Houlihan, told me about the opportunity, and I and I took it. And uh, we got onto it and enjoyed it. It was great crack, you know. Made good friends on it. Me, myself, and the three lads were all just. We were all just on the same mindset. We knew what we wanted to do, and we done it very well. And I think uh, it'll be the most entertaining uh, bit of team on team uh, fighting that that's going to be out this season compared to that ultimate fighter shit that's going on over there in the UFC. This is going to be ten times better, you know. With with the show, like I said, you got the call. You went over. Um, did you know any of the guys beforehand? Would you have been friendly with them before? Did you all kind of go, I know Dennis and Aaron knew each other and you all would know each other, but yeah. would you have been friendly with any of the guys or was it all kind of new beginnings for every for you with everyone? So I knew Aaron fairly well from before. We fought in the same cards before in the change rooms and we've, we've known each other fairly fairly well. We talked on Instagram and all sound with each other. We mates like so... I like going into the into the house, I was like, right, I know Aaron, at least I know someone. So like it's not into just not knowing anyone and seeing like what everyone's like. I didn't really know Max Elliot, but and I knew of Dennis. Everyone has their opinion of Dennis when they don't know him, but they know him through, through social media. But um quickly my my uh mindset about Dennis even changed. You know, he's not he is a menace, but he's not a bad guy. He's actually hundred percent and and it, it, it was uh, mind-opening. About three or four days into it, we were all, all the Irish boys were sitting together and looked at them and seemed to be like, you're actually not that bad. Like, you're not actually a bastard. And he's like, I know. <laughs> so that was uh, that was one of them things where like I realised that what he's doing is, is super smart as well. You know, he makes himself fairly marketable with what he does. And either you love him or hate him, but you'll always want to watch him either fight, win or lose. So he's he's smart in that aspect of it and then myself and Matthew have got along very well I've started training up like cross training between Sanda and uh, FAI and that that's thanks to Matty giving me a, a, a shout to come up and train with them and all and whenever I did it just showed uh, all the featherweights that are there you know like from elite uh, amateurs such as Tiernan and Corey even uh, Cormac Burns as well uh, up to the professionals, you know, Matthew Elliott, Scott Harvey's there, uh, Paul Hughes, of course, you know, just getting in rounds with all these people is just absolutely amazing and it's given me an opportunity to grow even more. So then just the four of us literally took over that house and we just enjoyed the show and made it very entertaining for the people and like the boring English boys. Yeah, Dennis had said that. That's what Dennis said, um, that we or the viewers outside might have opinions of you and Matthew or, or Aaron or whatever, that you might be quiet. But I was ta told, Dennis said about you, he goes, Armin's really about that. Armin, Armin's really about that. So it's not just Dennis giving them all shit. You all have an equal part to play in that, I presume. We we all have a great crack. Is definitely, like, you know, um, they don't want to give away anything because you just, you just see, but there, there's a lot of stuff that uh, we done that were very, very funny and very fun at the time. And, you know, I think obviously myself, not actually being Irish, but growing up in Ireland, I have that little bit of Irish tongue where I know when to give it back and how to give it back. And um, we all, we all, uh, in the verbal, there was no, the, everything was just KOs all over the place. Everyone was just getting it. So, you know, it was, it was great crack. We, yeah, uh, verbally that we were, we were undefeated, you know. There was no way anyone could get anything against us. There was too much. The comebacks were just coming left, right and centre. Every time the English boys tried to pipe up, we put them back in their seat. I can't wait to see this now. And obviously, it sounded like you had a really good uh, team unit there. And I want to talk to you about the coaches. Obviously, Paddy Houlihan, everyone knows him from Ireland. Uh, big into the politics. Uh, you've seen what he's done with Sean O'Bannon. And he's got some amateurs coming through, George and stuff. So what was it like working with Paddy and also Shem? Like, for me, Shem's a really interesting character. He's a fighter. 
he's a role model. He has a great story. What was it like that those dynamic between those who I'd say was fascinating to be around? And then obviously their level of skill and experience. Yeah, so um obviously Paddy gave me the shout about the show and get, got me the opportunity. So I know Paddy a long time. He um the first time I ever met Paddy was after one of my um title fights in kickbox and I won an ISK title and he wrapped the belt around my waist. And from then on, like I, I remember I texted him and thanked him and all because it's a big deal. It's a uh Irish legend and if we fought in the UFC and all to me right at the age of eighteen and all I was like kind of shocked that this was happening to me. It was a bit surreal. But then I, I got a good relationship with Paddy. We always talked to fight shows and all so he got me this opportunity. He gave me the call and let me know about it. And it was great to have him as a coach there as well, you know. He he really helped me focus on different parts of the game, not just physically but mentally especially. I think throughout my whole time away from the sport and everything mentally I've grown a lot more and uh, it's it's he's been a big help as well. He's given me a lot of good words of advice and and Shem has has been a big help as well, you know. Um I didn't obviously know Shem before coming on to this show. We would have known each other known of of each other because I was meant to obviously fighting at home ages ago and all that and he he mates in the home so he would have known of me that way but we've never spoke with each other or anything and uh, again another fella who I've gotten along with very well from, from the um, show but like that because I seen you put up the other day that you wanted to be on the same card as Shem you are on the same card as Shem yeah. so he must have made quite an impression on you yeah so like, like Shem Shem helped my, my game go a lot as well obviously like he knows I'm a striker as well so he's helped me like focus on getting back up to my feet uh, in the correct ways and lots of anti-grappling stuff like that and, and focusing on making sure I can anti-grapple back up and get back into my striking game, which is what I've been focusing on as well, you know, and he's been a big help in that. And then just the fact that, like, it would, it would be cool that, that two Irish boys, you know, one of them was a coach, the other one was a competitor on the, on the thing. So happy enough to be on the same card as him. It's, uh, it's going to be amazing. It is really good, and it's a new chapter into your pro career, one that we, we're all looking forward to. I can't wait to see it personally. Um, but on for a pro debut, is two weeks. Is two weeks enough time to get prepared, or has that time in the house prepared you for this? And what made you take this fight? Because I think his opponent fell out, was it? Yeah, so I've been non-stop training since I've been in the house, and since I've got onto the show up until now, like I've been flat out. I haven't stopped training uh, every day, apart from one day, obviously, a rest day. But I've been training, like, I've been getting ready for a fight. And I got this opportunity as well. I got a call if I wanted to take it. I can't say no to fights. And your man that, I, that I'm fighting, I actually was looking at him. Uh, obviously, he's a bit controversial. He's uh, had some controversial tattoos on him and all. So Dennis uh, actually was, like, in his head. We were talking about the roster and all. And he's like, I'd love to fight him, you know. It just would make sense that he wants to be a racist and all that. So whenever I, I got the fight confirmed, he was a bit like, oh, okay, type of thing. I wanted to beat him. But uh, he's just there. He's just another head. And he, there's not much about him. Like, he's a static striker who's done a bit of Thai boxing and throws a few inside kicks and has a loopy overhand but there's nothing special about him he's fairly beatable so I think two weeks is enough time for me to beat him anyway yeah because if you've been training obviously the preparation's been going in and I would presume then Dar Darren and yourself are doing the homework on him to see what you can do then to for the route to victory obviously with him being controversial and this coming up the scenes I went into the comment section. There seems to be a lot about this fight. There seems to be a lot going on. Um, how are you feeling about going over and traveling for your first pro fight? Like that must seem like a dream come true because a lot of Irish amateurs like yourself would go on to the regional shows, but to be brought to a show like this with, like you said, the likes of Sherman and the work they do on the promotional side and the production side is fantastic. It's a fantastic, uh, it's a fantastic promotion. How does it feel for all this to be happening for your first pro fight? Well, when you're good, you're good. You get to skip the queue, you know what I mean? <laughs> nah, I'm only joking. Uh, I, it's it's great, you know. Uh, I got blessed by God and he's given me this chance, so I've taken it. And any chance I get with it, I'm going to keep taking and keep thriving off it, you know. This is how I make a living now. This is my job. As a little kid, this was my dream to fight in front of stadiums of 10,000 people. And now I get to do that in Prague in a couple of days, like, this is this is what I'm made to do. I'm I'm made to fight. I've always been on this world just to fight, and that's it. Like I'm not good at anything else. 
dropped out of school and all and I've been fighting and that's all I can do so that's what I'm here to do and there's a reason why I'm still here and that's the fight yeah and like that you've been around quite a while around the amateur scene you're a well-known name we were all always wondering we thought this year was the year you're gonna go pro obviously there was a bit of inactivity then you came back on the show we were all I was like I was very intrigued but when you're saying here the people of Octagon might know or the fans of Octagon might not know when you're saying two weeks is enough Tell them about the story on Cage Legacy on how short of a notice you took a fight. So, fought on Cage Legacy. It was a kickboxing match. Uh, I was up there setting up the cage with my dad. And about an hour, 45 minutes before the show started and all, um, one of the lads had a pull out. And I said, you know what, I'll do a grappling match with him. But then uh, his coach, um, it was David Kay. I think that's how you say his surname. Apologies if I get it wrong, but um, David's coach Bobby was like, he's more of a striker. So then I was like, oh, I'll do a kickboxing match. I don't mind, like whatever. I'll do a wee bit of a move around and all. So got the got that fight on an hour's notice. It's it's a good story, like you know, but it's it's what I do. Like I'll I'll throw down right now at my garden, no problem. Like do you know what I mean? I go if anyone wants to go, we can go in time. Like I don't I don't care. Like it's it's never been a problem for me. I don't fear any man. Everyone bleeds just like me. Yeah, it's going to be a good scrap. That's a great story. That's what that was. I remember getting there and then it was like, what's happening here? Armand is fighting, but it's going to be a great fight coming up. And obviously, you've got the striking background. And obviously, I would be into the amateur scene. I don't know if people look at your amateur career. You've quite a lot of submissions for a striker. And is that, obviously, we've talked about this before. A lot of people think, right, I'll just take him down. And once you go to the ground, off your back, you're absolutely lethal. Yeah, well, uh... I am a great striker. Obviously, there's been times where I've never got to show that at the amateur scene because everyone has tried to take me down. I use my striking as well, you know, to set up panic wrestling and stuff like that so I can get to the neck and things like that. It's just kind of what my style has been like. But uh, for this fight, I have my game plan. I know I can outstrike this fella. I know what to do against him. And I know when I want to finish the fight, I can finish it. I think he'll have zero grappling, zero wrestling, and I can just get a hold of him. And if I want to take him down, I can take him down, you know? And I you... think I dictate everything in this fight. Sorry, I think I dictate everything in this fight, you know? I can take, dictate the strike, and I can dictate the grappling, you know? So this is a perfect fight for me, and it's a horrible matchup for him. And what I was going to say there, actually, was because this is in the pro ranks, not everyone know would have known about you in Ireland and your ex vice at kickboxing. Do you think he is going to just stand with you? He's got no grappling. He's just going to try and stand with you, which then leaves the ball in your court that you can take the fight where you want. Is that is that what way you think it's going to go? Yeah, a hundred percent. Like um, I know for a fact he didn't want to fight anyone that has good grappling. Now, if you look at me on paper, you can see my losses are from submissions and stuff like that. But if you look at the names on the list, you you realize why that does happen. There's been some fairly good names that have bet me. It hasn't been bums and people with loose loose change in their pocket. You know, so uh. I think if he tries to take me to the ground, I'm laughing because I'll definitely submit him within the first 20 seconds of him taking me down. You know, I I, I just know my uh, my jiu-jitsu is a lot better. So, and my wrestling is a lot better. I've improved a lot, you know. Uh, the last while I've been training up with FAI as well and they've helped my, my grappling grow a lot. So, uh, very thankful for that as well. You know, Pat and Shanda were two great coaches and then obviously with my striking and my MMA game coming from Darren as well. It's just a great mix of the two cl- two clubs for me. You know, it's it's making perfect sense to help my uh, style grow. You know, it is. And like that, obviously, with Darren, and Darren's been the master behind getting you this far, then adding that little extra element of FAI. If you look at FAI, all, like Reese McKee, Paul Hughes, Joe McCorgan, um, I just so many I can't even name. They're going to kill him. Like, is it Matt? <laughs> there's, just, there's just so it's many. Matt McCurry, like, uh, Ryan Curtis, the list just goes on and on and everyone seems to be migrating to there or going for training sessions to there. So I think that is probably obviously with the cross training, I think it should happen more. You've picked the right gym to, to cross train with. Um, I think it's only going to benefit your game and for this fight coming up, I'm really, really looking forward to it. I really want to see what happens. I'll be buying the paper. When, what day is it on? 29th? Is it 29th? 28th and 29th, I think. Okay, so... I'm fighting on 20th, so it's Friday and Saturday. Friday and Saturday. Okay, so 
Uh, we'll put up the link when it's out. Um, I'm going to let you go. I want to thank you so much for your time. Is there anything else you want to say before you go? Um, say no to racism. That, that's what I'm going to say. I'm going to say say no to racism and I'll get this fella. Don't worry, guys. Perfect. You're doing this this <laughs> Dennis wants, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. I want to thank you Dennis, so much. Dennis said, Dennis said, Dennis said uh, if I lose to this fella, we can't be friends and... Uh, <laughs> so <laughs> we'll have to we'll have to finish this guy so yeah we're going to be going for the finish I can't wait to see the fight once the fight is coming closer I'll show up the links where people can buy the pay-per-views etc it's been an absolute pleasure and I can't wait to see your fight thank you thank you talk to you soon pal <laughs>